Hi, welcome to our series of videos on growing microgreens put on by www.growingmicrogreens.com where we've got a great selection of supplies and starter kits and microgreen seeds to help you show, help you and show you how to grow your own microgreens on your own kitchen counter. It's fun, it's exciting, it's fast, and it's delicious and healthy. So, we are going to talk about once you've got your microgreens crop established, how do you kind of maintain it and care for it and get it into this awesome stage right there, right? Almost ready to harvest. So what we're going to do is this is a tray of Russian kale. We've already planted this Russian kale and it's been growing in the dark in a nice little humidity dome uh, for about two and a half days. Now what we've done here is we have misted with our mist spray bottle. We've misted this um, crop of Russian kale. Uh, roughly every 12 hours to keep it nice and damp. And now, let's take a look at uh, what it looks like. We kept it in the dark, keep it nice and damp and humid. There's our crop of Russian kale. Now, if you take a look at a quick comparison, you'll see what happens after a nice crop gets greened up and how kind of yellow that guy looks. It's important to keep your crop in the dark as it starts out because otherwise, if it gets too much light too quickly, it doesn't feel like it has to struggle and really establish yourself. And what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a weak, scraggly looking crop because you haven't had to, your crop hasn't had to struggle for life, right? These seeds really want to try to grow and struggle and struggle to get some light. So keep them in the dark probably for four or five days. Now at this particular stage with this crop of Russian kale, and remember we've, we're growing this crop hydroponically, so you can kind of see what it looks like. You can see some water down there in the channels of, uh, of the tray and you can see the root hairs that are starting to break through our sure to grow pad. So that's exactly perfect. That's exactly what this crop should look like at about two and a half days. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and miss these guys typically about every 12 hours. Remember this crop is only about uh, two and a half days old and we tip generally wanna keep it mostly in the dark for about the first four or five days more or less. Now what I'm going to do here with this crop, and you'll notice here where a little bit of light has started to uh, kind of sneak through past the blackout dome, and these guys have started to green up a little bit, and you can see some of the plants over here are starting to angle over. They're trying to pick up that light. That's good. That means they're struggling. They're working hard to get that light. That's going to make it a, a stronger, more robust crop. That's exactly perfect. So what we're going to do is after you sow your seeds, you're going to remist that crop every 12 hours. We're going to spray a little bit of water, make sure that uh, dome is uh, nice and humid in there and we're going to keep that blacked out for about four or five days. After about four or five days you should see a crop that is uh, quite a bit taller than this still quite yellow and pale and then go ahead and expose it to light. Now we'll talk about uh, in, in the next video in this series we'll talk about what it means to expose it to light and some options on that um, to really get some healthy looking crops but in the short run let's talk about another technique that's important to get your microgreens strong and healthy. This isn't a technique that you would use for every crop, but for this Russian kale I would use it, for this crop of broccoli I did use that technique, and that technique is make these guys struggle a little bit, not just for light, but make them struggle up. They're, they think they're in soil. Obviously they're not, this is a hydroponic crop. But to make them think they're in soil, what we're gonna do is on about day three or day four, this crop is almost close enough to be able to do this, but probably tomorrow morning, another 12 hours, I'll be on day three or maybe tomorrow evening, three and a half days. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this blackout dome and I'm just gonna flip it. And I'm gonna drop it right on top of that crop, just like that. Now, what I'm gonna do too, to make sure that they're nice and humid, is I'm gonna spray the bottom of that dome right, to make sure it's nice and damp, and I'm just going to drop that dome right inside that tray so that these guys are now really having to struggle. They're still in the dark, and there's some soil on top of them. They've established themselves a little bit, but they're going to lift this tray, right, and I'll do that on about day three, maybe day four, and what's going to happen is I'm going to leave this tray flipped over inside this tr in, inside on top of the crop for probably the next day and a half, maybe as long as two days. And what you'll see is you'll see this tray start to rise until you can kind of see the uh, seedlings underneath uh, through the edges here. Then take the tray off and you're going to be ready to expose these guys to light. That little trick, by the way, of flipping the tray on top of these guys 
really will make your microgreens struggle. It'll really force the roots to really dig down and establish themselves instead of some of them will skim across the top of the sure to grow pad. And that trick of flipping the tray will really solve that and really get a well-established crop that's going to be strong, healthy, and really gorgeous looking. So visit us at uh, www.growingmicrogreens.com for a full line of microgreen growing kits, seeds, trays, pH balancing kits, everything you need to grow your own microgreens in your own kitchen. It's a blast, it's healthy, and it's delicious. And of course, you'll amaze your friends with a really exciting and very different microgreen salad. Very cool stuff. Now, in the next video in our series, we're going to talk about what happens after you expose this tray to light and some of the techniques that you're going to use to water uh, and, and you're going to stop misting this tray and switch to watering from underneath uh, in the next video in this series.